who's on the dial. Uh, there is out here at lunch if you want to go ahead and make a plate and you can be eating while we do this. Great. Um, and there's also a little mini fridge out here. Please help yourself to soft drink water. There's a coffee maker if you have coffee. So you want to go ahead and take care of all that and we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yep, help yourselves right up there. And there's even popcorn up front if you want popcorn. Let's pop one. Yeah. <laughs> that is where it's not. We're in this room right here. So, yep, I think there's quite a seat right down there. Okay. It wasn't filled, and then they're just making plates for lunch and giving themselves drinks. Okay, thank you. So, help yourself. All right. How are you? How's it going? Tony. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You guys just getting started too? Uh, we were here for one previous class at, yesterday on the fourth floor uh, okay. today. So.
done. We talk about our test. Did you guys take it online or did you guys go in person? I debated about the online option, but I, I wonder if it would have been less stressful to do it there. Oh, gotta, online was so stressful. I'm like, I'm gonna get arrested. I mean, <laughs> I was just telling him I was sitting on the like, can you please move your hand? And I was like, Yeah, yeah. What? I had a classroom. Please move six inches to your left. I'm like, <laughs> okay, is this better? Yes. Okay. I had a classmate that asked me to the restroom and he told him you can't do it while you're taking like your current test. Yeah. So after he finished the test, like I think it was a national portion he was working on in between like the national and the state. Mm -hmm. He uh he went to go use the restroom and came back and did his IQ like, failed. Uh, oh. and so he had to do like everything over again just because he went to use the restroom. That's actually why I didn't do the online version too, because they said you yeah. couldn't go to the bathroom. Or and I didn't know how long it was going to take me. And you could go to the bathroom in person. Yeah. I thought it would be a crazy idea to be like, how could I possibly cheat? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you going to do? Like write down. I had to remove like paper shutter, like everything. When I went, they took my glasses. Yeah. It took me to take my glasses off. Like, well, it took me to take oh. my glasses off. And was like, she was like, really? I'm yeah. like, really? Yeah. They didn't do that to me. They didn't even like pull my screens they wouldn't let me chew gum, which I yeah. mean, yeah. 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 sure. I was like, <laughs> she didn't forget to sit for me. I was like, the worst. Yeah. Did you guys have anything to drink? Like water? Mm -hmm. I, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. No, good morning, still. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jennifer, and I am manager here at Sun Title. Laura will be joining us shortly. She'll probably be in and out because, um, of course, today decided to be the busiest day of our work week this week with closing, which is a good problem to have, but it also requires one of us to kind of be out there. Um, so um, obviously this is the title company or a title company. There's several of them in town, um, not of us, but several other ones. We are affiliated with Keller Williams upstairs. So um, that's why we're here. Um, but let me ask you, I just kind of want to get to know who you are and how long you've been in business before I kind of know what we need to go over today. So why don't you tell me who you are and how long you've been doing this? I can start. Um, okay. I'm Ashley Braun. I've had my license for about two weeks. So okay. brand new. Um, welcome. Thank you. Um, my name's Allie. I got my broker's license end of last month, um, but I've been in the industry. I was in new construction selling for a builder for okay. four years. So I, just, home. Okay. so I just left there. Just to okay, fabulous. I'm Danny. My test in February, but my license is like two months. So I got it at the end of the day. Okay. Wow. Uh, my name is Bea. I just got my license in May. Wow. wow. Oh, this, is awesome. this is awesome. Yeah, well, my name is Tony uh, Rodriguez, and I got my license probably three or four weeks ago now. And I kind of dabbled in a little bit of investing to um, all property and stuff so i'm kind of building up my investment portfolio okay. too hey i'm danny o'hara um i got my license probably like a couple months ago still waiting for, for it to come back to no, that's all right i just didn't yeah. know what i was because i've had people in classes that ask if they've been in it for a couple of years but they're just getting back into it so obviously none of you have probably <laughs> sat in a closing room unless you purchased a home or sold one so yeah. not from the agent side which is what i kind of needed to know Okay. This is Lauren. Like I said, she'll probably be in and out and she'll be doing some of this. Um, Lauren is a uh, processor slash closer here. Um, so she's the one you'll turn your orders into um, and she'll process them and communicate. She's going to go over that process here in just a few minutes. And, um, and then I have been, for the most part, trying to walk into the closings. Um, I've been doing this for <laughs> three, six years. Um, off and on, obviously, I've raised children and, and been in and out of the business, but I mean, I have 26 years pretty steady. Um, I did a stint with Estridge for a little while, too, so I dabbled in builder satellite. But um, um, so, Summit Title opened. We're just coming up on a year in about 35, 40 days. It'll be a year. 
believe that we would help with the business. So we are a new title company in town. But like I said, I've been around for 26 years. I've been at First American Chicago Title Services, but some of the big ones. Um, Lauren has been in for about four years now, and she came with me from Chicago Title, and we started this from the ground up. So um, with some investors from upstairs. So that's where we're at. So we're very... Um, I won't say anything bad about the other title companies because I have nothing bad to say about them. Um, but we are a very tailored title company to where we're very hands-on customers. Some of the other ones have become what I call turn and burn. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's harder to get customer service sometimes. I think we're a little bit smaller, so we can we're hands-on. It's for our eye touching the file from beginning to end. We're not passing it to five other people or four other people. Um, and that's not to discredit them because their their systems work, but that's just the difference between us and them. Um, I think. And with that being said, then, um, do you want, well, we want to start today. I don't know if it's going to give me a bit of um, talk yes. to you about um, When you guys submit your orders, like she said, they will come directly to me. And the biggest thing for me, the more information I can get up front, the easier it is and the less I'm going to look. Um, that's, you know, um, both agents contact information. Um, if you have a seller or a buyer, if you can include their contact information as well as the lenders, that way I can be in communication with them. And again, and I'm not blaming you. Um, the order gets sent to me, I enter it, I order the title search, and we are getting title searches back sometimes the same day if I can get it entered first thing in the morning. Um, but 24 hours is you will have time to work back. Uh, I will send you a communication. Once we do receive that, it will come across as title delivery. And if you're on the list side, I will point out any judgments or leads, open mortgages that are showing on the title work. I will highlight it. That way it brings your attention directly to that. If there's nothing there, then there's nothing on the title work. Um, if there's anything that I need from you um, on the buyer side, I will address it in that email as well, as well as throughout the um, transaction. Um, we do send with our title delivery a seller's authorization form. That is to be completed with the forwarding address, if they have one, um, as well as um, email address and phone number um, in it. The majority of the lenders that we request these payoffs from, we have to send them via fax or email, and they do not accept DocuSign. They have to be a wet signature. Sometimes the bigger companies, Chase, Wells Fargo, those kind, they're automated and we can get away with it, but, but try and get that um, wet signature from them. I process two weeks um, in advance. So if your contract date says, August 1st, I'm going to start working July 15th on that file. If you decide you want to move that closing up, notify me as soon as possible because I need to make sure that I have everything in so we can meet that deadline. Um, we can work in a rush a situation. We don't like to, but we can. Um, like she said, we're very hands-on. It's me in the beginning and her in the end of the file. If I have questions on judgments or liens, um, I will communicate it with her first before I reach out to you, just so I make sure I commu communicate it right to you guys. Um, and then the last thing would be your scheduling. You know, let me know when you want to schedule. Um, I send out a closing confirmation. We do have remote notaries that we can use. So if you have a closing that needs to close in Avon, um, actually Keller Williams has an office that we are able to use, and we have notaries that we will send to them. So don't worry about if you have somebody who's in Timbuktu, we can send a notary out to them. Or <laughs> if there's other locations that are more convenient for you and your client, we can accommodate that. Yeah, we are the only summit title in town. So yeah. um, if people always feel that that limits us to be able to do closings, we have closings right now currently going off in Columbus, Indiana, and Bloomington, Indiana. So it doesn't, we're not limited. Um, we can close anywhere. Um, we have Kelly Williams offices in Greenwood and Avon that will allow us in. We have office space in Fishers that will allow us in. Um, so that's kind of the donut counties. And then if you go out and down that, like Bloomington, these people requested to close the brewery today. We have a notary going to get out some brewery to sit at a table with them and close them. So um, it's fine, we'll do that. We also have a national notary company called BankServe that our underwriter uses. Um, they close in any state, any time, day or night, 24. 
cars and they basically, um, if there's a cost associated that would come to your party with requesting that. If your sellers or your buyers have relocated or haven't come to town yet, you know, we can close as far away as we're going to be going off in Alaska soon. Um, wow. So um, they are a national notary company. So they will go um, wherever. The fee is dependent on where we're sending them and what documents they're signing. So we always have to get an invoice from them depending on what your people want. But we have that capability too. So don't ever worry about that. You just need to just tell us what we need to do. So, all right, but let's get you to the closing table because you guys are brand new to this. So you go out and you sell a house or your buyers buy a house. Um, the first thing here, it does just say what to expect on closing day. Super simple, usually um, valid ID. Your parties have to make sure they don't bring in a expired license or passport. And then, you know, they bring in a expired license or passport. I'm going to show them the nearest DMV and then we'll continue the closing. But um, so they just make sure your parties have valid ID. And then cash to close. Um, we obviously will send you a closing statement. Lenders will talk to the buyers. Um, but Indiana has, I'm sure you've heard of your test probably out it's on your test it's on our test the good funds law anything over ten thousand dollars going to a title company has to be wired there are no exceptions to that rule any closing funds over ten thousand have to be wired i only say that and reiterate it because we've got a lot of lenders that are coming into this market that are not in the state and they are sending people yo you can take a cashier's check because michigan will let you take a cashier's check or whatever Indiana will not. It is a federal law. It is a state law, and I'm not going to look any orange. So, anything over ten thousand is going to come to me in the form of a wire. I can cut a check for a million dollars if I want and hand it to your sellers. I don't have to wire it out of here. But anything coming into me has to be wired. Okay. All right. Then the purchase agreement. So you guys are going to go write your first purchase agreements, hopefully very soon. So we have highlighted here what we're going to be looking for. And I know that when they brought the mentor group into me, we went over this with agents that have been in the field for a little while, um, just to kind of go over and reiterate, so we don't know what you did on in the real estate classes. If you have questions, please stop me at any point in time. Otherwise, I will just keep going. <laughs> um, so obviously, number one up there, uh, we need the listing broker and the selling broker's name, company, um, office code, if you've got it. If not, we'll find it, but uh, name, and, name and company. Number two is the buyer. The most important thing there is please ask your buyers how they want to hold title because their loan officer is going to want to know that and as well as we are because we have to prepare the deed coming from the seller to them. So if you've got, like I'm a Jennifer, but maybe I want to say Jen is my name. They can take title however they want their names. And then there is nothing that mandates they have to take it as their legal formal names. Um, so however their buyer wants to take title. Because I'll have some people show up here, they'll go by their middle name, you know, his name's Zach, and we've got Zachariah and something on there. He's like, well, it's Zach. Well, that's not what's on the purchase agreement. So just make sure you ask your buyers how they want to take title. Um, and then three is obviously the property that you're either selling or buying. Make sure that's filled in. As much information as you can give us, the better. But at the very least, address, um, city, state, and zip would work with what we can pull the rest. Um, and then the price. So there's your purchase price. Um, earnest money. Um, earnest money, you have different options. You're, you, the Keller Williams agents, Keller Williams can hold the earnest money. You can have them drop it to us, and that can be the form of a check as long as we're not closing in like the next three days. Um, they can walk a check in here to me for earnest money. Um, that's a little different than the closing funds. So we can hold it for you, um, or Keller Williams, obviously, those are your two options, or the other agent if you've got the buyer. So, just make sure that you note who's holding it down there, uh, listing broker, selling broker, or other would be, I guess, the title company on your agreements. Number seven, method of payment. Obviously, how your buyers, are they going to pay cash or are they going to get a loan? Um, if they're going to get a loan, we just need to know the mortgage company's name and contact information there. So I heard somebody talk about Mark Kuchik. I mean, obviously, we know where to find Mark, but I don't know where to find uh, a bazillion other lenders. So. Um, if you give us their name, the loan officer's name, and at least a phone number and the name of the company, we will track it down from there. But if you can provide more, that's great. And then the closing date. So on or before, like Lauren said, you're going to set a closing date. Um, we've got contracts in our office right now for September already. Obviously, those we've done the title work on them, but those files are sitting right now waiting for closing. Because if they've got payoffs, and she orders a payoff today and it doesn't close until September, that's going to be good. 
That's why she processes two weeks prior to get the most accurate, up to date information. So those files in September are very well. Somebody can call us and say, we want to close in August, fine, we'll start processing it. You know, but just know that if you turn it in for us like for an extended period of time, we're not going to look at that file until two weeks before that date, unless you tell us we need to. Okay. Um, and then the closing fee, obviously, that's one of your negotiable items. It's going to be paid by the buyer or the seller, or it's going to be shared equally. So that's going to be important as well as the next page, the survey. Surveys can either be waived, sellers, buyers, or shared equally. Um, if it is a survey or location report or a closing survey, we will order those for you. You don't have to order those on yourself. On yourself. Uh, we use Han Survey. They charge, for most of the donut counties, it's about $195. Sometimes they have to go out and it's expensive, it's $295, but that's the going rate. Right. So, so, do you have a survey um, No. Okay. No, okay. especially okay. if they're in a neighborhood. They just depend on if the lender requires it or not. Okay. The lenders will drive if that's required. I don't require I don't know that's from my side of life if there's a survey done or not. Okay. Um, but your lender might, or if there's a question, when you go out and look at it, you think the sense that's is wrong. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, you might want to have one done to protect your clients. Um, if they do need a boundary survey, like she just said, boundaries, um, that will be something that you'll, your clients will order on their own. Um, and it's only because there's such a significant expense with that that the surveying company wants to sign what they call a no cancel order. A survey or location report, if we order one, I can cancel it with Han because they have them in a drawer. I can say we're not going to pay you for that, but we're not going to hand it out for closing. Um, a boundary survey, that's a state survey, those are significant higher cost. So the surveying companies want a no cancel order sign and probably a deposit put down from your customers. So we won't order boundary surveys, but we can hook you up with a surveyor that will do it for you. Um, home warranties, those are about 50-50 if you see those right now. They are making a comeback. They were gone for a while during COVID, but now they do seem to be making a comeback. So obviously, um, whether or not you're going to have a home warranty um, and who's going to pay for it. Home warranties we do not order, so that will be ordered by whoever you check there, ordered by buyer or seller. So um, I do know, I don't know if you met her yet, she'll be the color range to use Lauren Crenn, the choice home warranty is the color range preferred. She's awesome. She's, I mean, I see a lot of her warranty programs from here. She's, she's a, she's a great gal. You'll meet her at the color range meetings on Wednesday. She usually is there. So, um, but obviously you can use any home warranty company that your people want. And then title, owner's title insurance. Typically in Indiana, we see the sellers pay the owner's policy and the buyers pay the lenders. But obviously that's all up for negotiation. That's just typically standard what happens. Um, so obviously you just want to make sure the boxes are filled out. And then taxes. Oh, we love taxes. Typical standard is to prorate them. Um, but you do have other options there. Obviously I'm sure they went over that with you, but um, standard industry-wide, we usually see them being prorated. So. And then if there's any further conditions, I'm going to look there for if the seller's paying X amount of closing costs or, you know, I'm not sure what. Um, really can't be a whole lot there um, as far as I'm concerned, just paid fees. I remember during COVID, somebody said that the, the buyer would provide pizza for the seller's family on Friday nights until it closed. Oh, my God. Uh -huh, the lenders said, get that countered out. I said, I will. That nah, can't be in there, so don't put crazy <laughs> stuff in. But that was the most interesting thing I think I saw. They're going to provide pizza. I thought, okay. <laughs> Um, and then obviously we need to make sure it's executed. We're always going to ask you for executed copies of things. So, um, you know, just make sure you get your signatures, which I'm sure upstairs is going to want you to have your signatures as well. Um, and then any amendments, was the other day that I sent it out and we almost got to the closing table and the agent kind of said, this sales price is off by $10,000. And I said, hmm. Purchase agreement. I just I would send you the counter offer. I said, well, it's cash. I would never didn't have a lender to double check me on that. So, yeah, make sure we have all counter offers because obviously I can't read minds. I don't know what's going on up here. So, we fixed it. Nothing, nothing was wrong. But okay. So then you're going to see from me producing that title commitment is the closing statement. So this is where I will point out to you what you're looking for. Um, just simply because I know it's overwhelming. Please stop me if you have any questions. Um, you're going to get this closing statement, hopefully at least, at the very least, a day before closing. I try to get them out a lot sooner. If it's cash, we can get them out pretty quickly. If it's a lender-driven, I obviously have to balance with the lender, and I'm at their mercy for when that happens. Um, but we will ask that you just double-check the property address. 
and either your seller or your buyer's name. So whoever you have, whichever client you're representing, just double check the spelling on us because we're all air, we're all human and we make those errors. So just kind of double check, put eyes on that spelling for me if you don't mind. Um, and then we're gonna look at the sales price. Obviously that's what that agent needed to hone in on. Make sure that sales price is correct. Um, if there's a lender involved, you can pretty much be assured that it is just simply because the lender and I have both put eyes on it. Um, and then obviously the earnest money, that's where that'll show up, whatever was in the contract, number five is the earnest money. And then those taxes, they're, they're prorated. So they're debits to the seller and credits to the buyer. So make sure that there's prorated taxes there. The next under the light green is gonna be all of your lender fees. You are probably not gonna have access to knowing if those are correct or incorrect. Your buyer sure will know, because that's something the lender would have gone over with them. So the buyer will know that. And then the lender's title insurance and the owner's title insurance. Um, you have our late parts there, so you can double check those. Owner's title insurance in Indiana is set by the sales price, and those are published rates. Uh, we've used Fidelity as our underwriter, um, and Fidelity also underwrites for Chicago Title, Meridian Title, and a few other the mom and pop shops around and the one offs. So those insurance rates are identical to those companies is what I'm saying. Um, closing fees can differentiate, but those title insurance premiums are identical because those are set by the underwriter for the title company. We don't come up with those. Um, obviously, First American is underwritten by First American, so theirs will be a little different, but Fidelity underwrites Austin, Chicago, Meridian. I can't think of, I don't know if there's insurance too, uh, but those rates are all the same. And then the next page, you'll see the reporting fees for the deed and the mortgage on this one and the sales disclosure. Sales disclosure for the state. And then we have the payoff there for the seller's current mortgage. And this one called for a home warranty. So we're paying the home warranty and the seller must have been paying it. And then here's the most important part for you guys, your paychecks. There's your commissions. Please double check those. Those are your paychecks. You want to make sure that's right. Uh, make sure we have the right commission amount. We do ask for that from you. We obtain it from you, but sometimes it changes throughout the process for whatever reason. Just make sure that your commission splits are right. Okay? Because that's your paycheck. So make sure you get that. And then obviously there was a survey here. So we charge for a survey. You can see the buyer for 195. Down at the bottom, it just shows you then the due from borrower and the due to the seller. So if you have a buyer, the good news is for you, the lender has already gone over the closing disclosure with them and arrived at this figure. So your buyer should have very few questions for you. Um, if you have a seller side, obviously you're gonna have to be able to go over this closing statement with them prior to me. I'm happy to go over it with you, I'm happy to go over it with them. Um, but I don't talk to your seller before, well, sometimes I'll talk to them if they call me, but um, I'm not gonna overstep you. So if you're representing the seller, I'm gonna send you the closing statement. Now, if you ask me then then call the seller or go with the seller, I'm more than happy to, but I'm not gonna overstep you because that's your client, you're my client. So um, sometimes we'll overstep on the buyer side because buyer instructions, we will not send buyer instructions to you. Please don't ever ask me, sir. Um, we will send them to the buyer directly secure, and then we will have a communication with the buyer, and that is to take you out of that wire fraud possibility or having any hands-on with that. Um, so we will handle wiring instructions between us and your buyers. Um, just, and that's just to protect from fraud. We're not trying to leave you out, but we're just trying to streamline that so that the fraudsters can't get hold of it. Um, so they can always call us, your buyers can call us for wiring instructions. We'll tell them that, the lenders will tell them that because the lenders won't even send their wiring instructions on. So that is a closing statement in a nutshell. If you look at the next couple, keep going through, there's a seller CD. I will never review these in closing rooms because they're confusing as all get out. Um, I just show that the numbers on that settlement statement that you see and the seller CD match. And that's what they need to know. This is a lender required document. So the sellers don't really need to worry themselves with that. And I thought we had a buyer CD in here, so I'll show you what your buyers are getting. I hope they should fill it in here. Keep going through a few more pages. Let's do the buyer CD. This is what your lenders will send to your buyers, and this is how they communicate the fees to them. 
And this is where they will go through this. I won't go through this in the closing room either because this is actually a document between the lender and the buyer. It's really not our business. I'll hit the highlights on page one there showing them their loan amount, their interest rate, their uh, payments, and then the cash to close. And then I'll point out that that cash to close matches my settlement statement. So all those figures are there because this document on the next few pages goes through a lot of their personal and, and private information between them and the lender. So I don't draw that out in closing. The lenders have already gone over that with the buyers in detail before they get here. And you'll notice that because I'll talk to the buyers and say, your lender reviewed this with you and they all shake their head yes. I mean, they didn't be proud of with it. So, um, so yeah, but that's what a CD looks like. These CDs have to be out to your buyers three days prior to closing or we don't need a closing date. And that's the new law that was set a few years ago. So um, it has to be out 72 hours prior to closing and acknowledged by the buyer. Um, there are little ways around it though. The lenders will often send these out and overshoot our prices and overshoot our things. So that then once we balance, because they're late getting in figures, so we they may we may balance and it'll be lower than what was disclosed. They legally can do that. That's the loophole they found. So doesn't mean we're getting closing figures any earlier. It just means that they have to have the buyers acknowledge the CD in some form three days prior to closing. So um, and then the last page is our rate card. So you will have that. You can take you've got hard copies there. We gave the next card stock ones. So if you're going out to list a home or what have you, um, you can look and see what the owner's title policy would be. Um, lender's title and insurance is always hundred dollars. It's all set simultaneous. So um, you're just really concerned yourself with the owner's policy. If you get into the over million dollar market, please just call me. I'll what the title insurance premium because we only got two million and then I have to do some fancy math. So um, if you have a house that's listing for over a million, just give me a call and we'll run the numbers real quick for you, no problem. Um, and that way. Um, prelim title, you'll hear that mentioned a lot. A lot of title companies won't do prelim title. We are doing it up to this point in time until it starts to bite us. Um, prelim title, if you have a pro property that you are concerned about that might have some things that are on title or you can just don't quite have a good feeling about it. We can certainly run prelim and see what's out there. We only ask that you obviously fight really hard on the purchase agreement to have it closed here then, because otherwise, you know, we have to meet that prelim. <laughs> I was going to ask, who's that before you guys charge? Um, we don't charge anyone. I mean, if the term converts to a thing, it just goes in the owner's title policy because it's all part of that. Mm -hmm. If it's not, we're usually eating between $100 and $150 on prelim. Okay. And for now, we've agreed to the agents upstairs that until it gets out of control, we will do that. It is starting, to, we're getting a lot of prelims, but they are converting to final. I mean, they are converting. Um, and that's because agents are trying to control title. Um, they're putting prelims. If they got prelim here, when they list at home, they can tell them this is closing. You know, they put it in their listing. This is closing of summit title um, because they already have prelim for it. And they can show a potential buyer. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we just ask that if you do pro prelim, you just do your best to fight it out, you know. I mean, I don't really all have to do for that. I've never been an agent, never won that app. Um, people usually don't question it unless, like, they have a family member who owns a title. Yes. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think at first we were so new in the fall. I mean, we were, it was like, who the heck is on the title? But like I said, I was a Chicago child for 14 years, so I have a lot of, I mean, I've been doing this for 26. So now that agents and lenders have discovered where I moved to, they're like, oh, okay, wait, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, so now they're a little more comfortable. So it's like, but at first they're like, who's some of the title? Like, who is this person? Mm -hmm. And then when they walk through the door, they're like, oh, we know you. I'm like, <laughs> it's you guys. So, because I didn't announce that we were, like, I was leaving and all that. It was just kind of done. It was just, yeah. You know, I just, I, just, I just wanted to challenge myself in a down market over the not? Um, so any questions? I mean, anything I can, I know I flew through that. From like a timeline standpoint, yeah. so like when is like, let's say you get an offer accepted mm -hmm. on the first, when does an agent generally give you an order? Right away. Okay, they'll just, we walk in on Monday mornings, a lot of times to a lot of emails that are purchase agreements saying we, you know, have this offer and, and all of this, um, pretty much right away, they, they, within 24 hours, I think, just to get the title work started, okay. um, to show this to the buyers that either you're on it or whatever. Okay. So it's, and like I said, if you just send us the purchase agreement at first and say, I need to get this, I'll get you the rest of the information, that's fine. We can at least start with the purchase agreement, entering the order and, and getting all that. Okay. Um, 
I don't know if any of you do you, how you want teams. Are you, are you just individuals? Okay, awesome. Uh, I know a lot of the admins sometimes send us all the information for the lawyers. Okay. Um, and so, but like Megan Porterfield is an individual agent upstairs. I know she does the mentor group because she's the one that brought the agents to go over that purchase agreement. Um, she would be a really good resource to talk to. She, she submits stuff pretty quickly. Um, and usually it's just the purchase agreement and the closing date, and then we kind of fill in the blanks with her. So we're, we're very patient. I mean, as long as you're responsive to us. <laughs> Don't send us a purchase agreement and go with us for a little while, but figure it out. <laughs> um, we do have those agents too that I'm like, okay, we're never gonna email back from them. But um, no, they're, they're great. You've got a lot of resources upstairs to pull from for sure. But I would say the faster you get it to us, um, the better off you are because then you can tell your other agent it's been submitted. Okay. Um, like we had one the other day, the agent didn't get it in. Well, today's Tuesday, Monday morning, somebody was waiting on us with Ernest and, and they dropped it off and we were just getting our day going. So we took it from them, had an address. We went to our computer, we have no file, we have nothing. We're like, okay. you just have a person's money. Mm -hmm. just <laughs> I did. And literally about three o'clock yesterday afternoon, here's a new order. Oh, that address matches what that man this morning told us. So the buyer beat the listing agent's order here, which is fine, but you know. Um, is that more common for the earnest money to go to the brokers or to you guys nowadays? It's changing. Um, it's it's changing. I mean, at first I would have said the brokerage, but now it seems like lately they've been walking in our door a little bit more. So I don't know if there's a shift out there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but I would say still it's about 50-50. I don't think it matters. I think it's if um, whatever you're comfortable with um, and whatever the buyer's agent is comfortable with. Some of these buyer's agents may just say they don't want the agent to hold it. They want to have a company so they walk it in the door. We're fine. Yeah. We're fine either way. We also have the Ernest app. I know Keller Williams has the Ernest app. We actually are on that app too. So your buyers can go on there and find us and submit it through Ernest. If they do that, we just ask that you let us know because we have to know the box where they can look for it. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, the wires automatically match for us. They can pull through. Ernest doesn't pull through because like it's an ACH credit. So um, just if they are going to do that, just let us know. And that way we'll go look for it. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's easy. Um, closing days, you come in and we'll sit you in a room. We usually have buyers and sellers on each side of the table. And um, I'll go through all the paperwork. And then I'll leave and y'all can talk have all that fun stuff and I'll make copies and then afterwards we take pictures if you want we kind of make it a celebration um, if, as long as the people are happy and friendly and it's not an awkward situation <laughs> this is a picture <laughs> yeah. <people> <laughs> yeah we need separate rooms and we need to be across the street I mean you know it's like um, we can do separate rooms obviously here we have two closing rooms and then we have oh the media room which we'll show you on the way out um, we do have a media we call it a media room a community room it's been called a few different names we have a lot of agents that come down um, from upstairs and it's a room in here we'll show you um, if I saw it and it has a ring light you can pull the big ring light in there if it's not in there for some reason and they do a lot of podcasts and their their Facebook lives and their um, TikToks whatever they're doing they're in there just <laughs> moving and hollering um, so they use that room for that and that's what it's for we just open it up to anybody and then we could get anybody off the street to use it too because we can't just be specific to Keller Williams but it's basically just kind of like they just use it um but it's also a good room if you need to just come down and quiet, find quiet you can click into the guest wi-fi and work in there as well it's a space it's there for you to use um i can't tell you sundays it won't be crazy in here but you're welcome to it um we don't have a sign-up sheet right now we haven't had any trouble with people overlapping um so people are just they come down they make their little videos and go on so but that is for you to use um we always have coffee and soft drinks and snacks for the closings um, that your people are welcome to. Um, and you're welcome to as well. Um, else? Um, your commission checks you'll be given at closing because uh, Carl Williams doesn't let you wire those. Um, so you'll take them upstairs and put them in. I can email you paperwork, but they just you'll have to take the physical check. So um, I don't know if anybody was, I mean, other brokerages have their agents wire it sometimes, but upstairs does not have to do that. So not yet, maybe we'll change to it. But for right now, you got to take a physical check. So you'll get that at closing. I'm um, trying to think what else for you guys. So, so are you ready to hit the ground running? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, 
or to go to the meeting. We're going to make the meeting tomorrow. This is going to be tomorrow. It's not a way to collaborate. Is it like a monthly meeting? I signed up it's for it, but I don't know it's weekly. It's weekly. Okay. We usually need it to shoot this work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's weekly. Um, I don't know what tomorrow's. I don't know what. Is it usually like a ton of people or is it a smaller group? It varies. Uh, it varies. It depends on. It's been pretty, yeah. It's been it's pretty uh, cool. Sometimes, well, yeah. Depends on what the topic is. Um, it depends on who's coming, if they have a speaker coming, because um, it's also Zoom. So it's oh, not really a lot of Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's where Mark Kuchuk will get up and give his little like weekly hello, here I am. We get up there, we don't have a lot to say sometimes, but we <laughs> stand up there. I mean, what's title world? I mean, it is what it is. Just send me an order, I'm going to close it. You know, I mean, I don't have a lot of like mortgage and Mark can talk about mortgage interest rates and all this. I'm going, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Lauren Cran from Choice Home Warranty will probably be there because we haven't had one in a couple of weeks. Um, but we didn't have one last week. And then we missed the ones before that because we were at the end of the month. And then the month title companies are looking up very well. So <laughs> I certainly could not make the, um, the uh... hey, Lauren, can you come here? Can you come here? Yeah. Can you talk to Teresa? Let's see what she has. I'm sorry, that's one of our closers. It's in the closing right now. And she is. She'll be gone. So. We have five closings going on today, but that's what I told them. Yeah, so which is awesome. But it was like the only day of the week. I thought the rest of the week we have like one closing a day. I'm like, why on the day that we're doing it at night we have five? But it's okay. It's all right, you know, blessings. Um, so yeah, I did. We were way early. So what other questions do you have? Fire away. If they're about title work. Or if title. There is like a weird thing that comes back with the title, mm -hmm. like how do people fix that? Like, is do you guys offer solutions? Like, maybe go talk to X, Y, and Z, or do you oh, basically absolutely. just give us the information? And like, oh gosh, no, 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 no! It's our responsibility to clear that. It's not your it responsibility. Okay. We may have to ask for help okay. because we don't know the people. So, um, like, if there's judgments that show up against a seller, um, we're going to contact you and tell you about those judgments, and then you're going to say, "Call my seller," and so then we're going to go ahead and skip right over you, and we're going to go straight to the seller. And um, if they're, if the seller will say, oh my gosh, you know, they've got a common last name. Those judgments are not me, no way, shape, or form of that's me. We're going to ask for like their last three known addresses, their social, because we can clear them that way. And then we're going to do a not one of the same affidavit at closing. Okay. So no, it's not you that's going to clear them. It's us that's going to clear them, but we're going to ask you for help. Is she okay? Um, so we're going to ask for help um, with whatever we need from you. Um, Saying, hey, your seller's got this federal tax warrant, your seller's going to freak out on you. And we need you to probably break the ice before us random call them and be like, hey, you got this federal tax thing. It's, you know, $30,000. And they're going to go, who are you? And what are you talking about? And so we're going to ask you to break the ice with them by that email. Say, hey, guys, you know, the title company found me this, this, and this. And this is who's going to be calling you so okay. that they know who we are because that's going to yeah. be our introduction to them. Okay. Otherwise, we're calling them and in today's world with all the scams and everything. They're not going to yeah. yeah. they're not going to be receptive to us. So we will ask for your help, <laughs> but you're not going to be responsible for carrying that. Okay. No, no. In new construction, there was never any issues with titles. Right. Because you were brand new. Homes. Yes, yeah. it was brand new. Yeah. If yeah. you had trouble, then you knew something else was really wrong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, we have what we call not one and the same affidavits. Sometimes those sellers will have to sign that. Um, the attorney will prepare it and we'll have to sign it at closing to say that it's not them and we'll report it with the county so that it'll come off the title work. But um, okay. What if somebody wants to like buy a home in their name but then transfer it to their business? Is that something you guys can do like at it, closing? Or? It is something we can do after closing. We can refer you to the attorney. Okay. Um, I can't knowingly do it because I'm ensuring the title work to the lender. Okay in a certain you know like your name and then all of a sudden i'm going to change that okay. but the attorney can do what's called a quick claim deed okay um it's a charge i've got a couple of those right now that are coming in i think between all all in with him preparing it and all the recording fees it's just about a hundred dollars oh that's very minimal. yeah it's okay. not and we can do the we'll do the recording and stuff i'm just not going to know any of the documents so okay. um so i can say i can do it um <laughs> uh but yeah you know plausible deniability um so that's easy quick quick needs oh the other thing speaking of that okay let's talk about women who have gotten married and changed their names mm -hmm. you go to list a home and mr and mrs smith are sitting there and they tell you their names are mr and mrs smith and all of a sudden tower comes back and mrs smith was mrs you know jones or whatever miss jones 
have them, I, I need you to have them sign the purchase agreement, how they bought the home. Mm -hmm. So even if she's telling you the name, and then I need to know this. You need to say, hey, they bought it. Her name is Jones, but it's now Smith. Mm -hmm. We'll fix it at closing. I said the closing table when I find this out, but I'm like, oh, God, it holds up closing. So just if she says, I got, we weren't married when we bought the house. We got married. I changed my name. So I'm now known by this. Just tell us because we can fix it super easy ahead of time because the attorney will do an also known as or formally known as statement and it's done, handled, and we can go on closing with no problems. <laughs> I love it when I walk through the closing room and they'll hand me the license. I'll be like, oh, oh I changed my name. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. <laughs> because I have to run a search on that prior name that it holds up closing. So just if they tell you I have a name change, be like, oh, we got to call Jennifer Moore and tell them that. And it's an easy fix. Because this is this is if you're the listing agent, right? Yes. Okay. Usually your buyers we're gonna run into that because your yeah. buyers are gonna buy your house. Yeah. Right. Listing agent. You have a lot of those that you know they bought the house before they were married, mm -hmm. they get married, she changes her name and so it doesn't match, then the last deed of record. Because she can go down and change her name without reporting a deed, you know. So, um, yeah, so stuff doesn't match. So, if she ever says to you, I changed my name, just know, oh, I gotta call this out of company <laughs> and let them know this. So, I mean, we can fix it at closing, it's just gonna delay, it's just gonna make it a long closing. Um, closings, I typically I joke with people are like, oh, it just takes two or three hours. I'm like, mm, better not. Um, I usually can get people in and out on a purchase in about 40 minutes if we're moving. Um, cash is about 20. So, yeah, we don't, I mean, we can have longer ones, one that package is huge, but there's no reason to prolong it. Nobody wants to sit Unless here. they ask really Unless questions. They ask really questions or their readers. You know, there are, there are exceptions to every rule, but I think on average, I mean, I'm in and out. I know I've been doing it long enough. I know how to move paperwork and, you know, as long as the people stay with me and sign and not try to cap things and what have you. Um, and the lenders don't have fun enough. So. One more question. So if somebody buys a house, like who figures out the tax situation? Like if someone buys a house, turns out that house was actually not a homestead property and the taxes are like double and you don't want them to get stuck with paying in arrears like really who figures all of that out well there's no way to fix that um that would be where so let's say the people okay so your buyers you're saying your buyers are buying a house that's not homestead right okay so they are going to have to pay the higher taxes um until the next year but it, they'll get prorated tax credit at closing based on the higher amount so they should be credited based on the higher amount properly we, the okay. purchase agreement says the tax proration is based on the current tax bill okay so i pull a tax bill on every file and i look at that and it's going to show that higher amount okay well that's what i'm going to base my credit off of is that higher amount so they'll be given that credit but they, they, still, have to pay they it. still have to pay it okay they're still going to have to pay it because the homestead exemptions um we have to file for them by the end of this year Everybody that buys a house in 2023, as long as they file it by December 31st, it'll take effect in, in next year. Okay. So like the people that are buying houses right now, if they walk in to buy a house today and they're paying the November tax bill, they're paying that higher amount. And there's no way around that. But they're getting the credit for the higher taxes. Okay. Um, so I mean, that has to, it hurts, I know, it stinks. Yeah. But at least you're getting the credit for yeah. the higher taxes. Yeah. Um, so. But homesteads always have to be filed by the end of the year to take effect the following year. We file them for them. If there's a deed going in, we will file the homesteads. The mortgage exemption is gone, as I'm sure you've heard about. And if you didn't tell me, but it's gone, it's absorbed into the homestead. Um, so we'll file the homestead exemption for them at closing. We just, I'll go through the skill with them and tell them, make sure you follow up uh, to get the receipt uh, by the end of the year in their possession. And we provide county auditors to help them on their website for them. So they have that information. So when they get the reported deed back from you, they have to use the loan to receive the homestead. Um, so those homestead exemptions are taken care of. What else do you guys do? They would ask you. I have a question. So that's obviously like a lot of information, like going over this packet and things like that. You know, Could you just okay. give like a like a main point, like our relationship with you guys from the time that we make an offer on a house and it's accepted to like closing, like the times that we'll be communicating. We will communicate with you to let you know that we received the order that you probably emailed to us. So we'll okay. know that we got it. And then Lauren will send you a welcome letter um, saying welcome to Summit Title. We received the order. Here is your order number, like your file number. And, um, you know, if she's missing any 
phone numbers, like the other agent, you know, she may ask for information if you didn't turn everything in, you know, she may ask you for something, but minimal. Um, so you'll hear from that, and then you'll hear from us again for title delivery. When the title work comes in, she'll send you another email saying, here's the title work. Um, she'll point out, like she said, if there were judgments or anything found, or if it's clean, you know, just so you don't have to read it. Um, we're trying to keep you from having to read that book document, or that document, because, um, you know, why do you want to read the title work? Um, so she'll point out and highlight if there's anything that needs to be resolved on it. Um, so you'll hear from her then, and then obviously it'll be, you know, let us know when you want to schedule the closing. Um, so you'll tell us that, and then she'll send out a closing confirmation based on that to all parties. So all parties are fully aware of when and where this is closing. Um, it goes to the lender, both agents, um, so you have that. And then you'll hear from you the closing statement. So, and you'll get your welcome letter, your title work, your closing confirmation and your closing statement. So you guys schedule the closing date? We do not. No. You guys do. We do. Okay. Yeah. When you say order, that's like purchase agreement. Yes. Yep. Your title order. Okay. Yep. And I mean, we'll talk to you all day long if you want to talk to us, but you know, we don't have to bother you. I mean, we, you know, we can keep it minimal. Um, and unless we have questions on the file, if something comes up, like we're trying to clear a judgment, we may have to have a little bit more conversation with you through that transaction or, you know, about the foreclosure that we have going on, that's what the closer if she's at one of those or has one, it's a little worried. So, um, you know, if, if, if we've got a, what we call a messy file, we may have a little bit more communication than on a normal file. Normal file, you won't hear from us very much unless you want to. Hopefully you know, they're files. all going to be clean. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Closing, oh, closing schedules. That's, I mean, you guys will have that closing date in the purchase agreement, like when you offer it, you know, it goes on or before this date. So that's when we're going to look at that as it's going to come sometime around that date. Um, but you guys are actually going to, whenever you and the buyers you want to all come in together or pick on schedules, if we're closing in one location or we're closing the seller somewhere else, I mean, you guys let us know that okay. or what works for your parties. We okay. do not set closing date and time. That's up to you guys okay. to let us know what's convenient for you and your, your sellers and buyers. Typically, we do a closing with sellers and buyers all together. Now, today it's a weird day, and I have sellers coming in for one year that the buyers are closing in, in Bloomington at noon, and they couldn't all get together. So, mm -hmm. we have stuff like that. But typically, the closing is when buyers and sellers all show up at the same time and they exchange keys and life goes well. So, okay. but people live out of state or traveling, and they never know they got to work. So, okay. you guys tell us what works for you and your clients, and we'll get scheduled that way. So yeah, otherwise we're here, I mean, as much as you need us, I mean, we're here for any questions. We always tell people, no matter if you close here in the title company, if someone comes up, so just since you're new, because um, obviously you can't control every deal, we know that, I know that. Um, if you're in the title company, you think something seems off, come down and talk to us, we'll talk to you about it. We're not going to just throw you out to the world, so we'll, we'll help you as best we can. I mean, you know, I won't have a lot of information, but I'll help you. Um, or if there's something you're not understanding that they said to you or you're wanting, just let me know. We're, we're here to help. So, and like I said, we can't control every deal. We get that. And they'll all be buying for your business anyway. So, you know. are you going to take gold? Have they talked about gold? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I took it. I started here, like I said, last August 1st. We opened this in September, and I was in gold, and I was like a deer in the headlight. Because I was like, first of all, I'm not a realtor. <laughs> and second of all, what is this? You know, it was awesome though. I will never regret doing that one minute of my day. But um, but we are sponsoring the first um, meeting of it, I guess, the one that's like the free one that you can go check it out, August 9th, I think it is. So we will be there that day with our some of our swag that's on order. So you can take the swag with you, but we don't have it right now. We're ordering. Mm -hmm. um, or sunglasses and koozies and bags and stuff. So you'll have some swag to take with you today. We have mouse, yeah. we have mouse pads up front left over. I mean, there's mouse pads up there. If you still need a mouse pad, take one of those. Um, obviously, you can take the booklets with you. Those are rate cards. Those rate cards yeah. don't change. So you have those. I have our business cards. Feel free to call us, email us, whatever you need. I mean, we're here to help. So Thank you. You're going to help you find your way in this world. But welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Like I said, if any questions, any time, just pop down. We're here all the time. So that doorbell rings a lot. This is good. <laughs>
or if you just need popcorn one day or something. Um, or we have one agent upstairs who comes down for the coffee every morning. And she says, well, I don't, I don't drink coffee, so I have no input on that. So there's a lot of coffee out there, and she says it's really good. So we see her every day when she's working upstairs for coffee. So hop down and see us, and you will show you the media room on the way out. Thank you. Know where that is because that's for you to use. I do like how this What? <laughs> oh, we just throw it in here. Okay. Thank you for lunch. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, it was helpful. I felt a little scattered. No, you did really good. Straight to the point. Um, a lot of it. Where's my fire hose? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They all come together though. I'm glad we're getting the information. That's why I feel yeah. color. I feel like other places they don't have this training. Yeah. That's what I've heard. This is great. Yeah. 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 They do I'm like, I'm well. just taking it on. Good morning. It's one of those like ones where I should. Do your first one. Yeah. Then it'll like, it'll start to click. Yeah. Then you'll be like, okay. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Let me go back to my notes. So yeah. for now it's like well, just gotta hold on. I'm like I have bought, <laughs> bought and sold a lot of my own houses, yeah. but hold on all my notes. Which school did you go through for real estate? Uh Tucker. Yeah. School group. yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Oh, yeah. How about you? Ibrida. Ibrida? Mm -hmm. Online? J Rose. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It was awful. Was it? I thought. Tucker was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, well, I actually ended up getting Tucker's notes from EXP. Yeah. I had a friend with EXP. Yeah. 